Hello everyone. So, from development of English language in India, so part three we are going to discuss from translation to collaboration in language learning. English language learning has developed over years in India from the colonial days to the present days. Yes, English language has developed from when from colonial days the British has colonized our country. So since then to now the language has developed. So British came to India not as a rulers but as a traders. With the expansion of trade they got hold of Indian administration by befriending numerous princes and subsequently overpowering them. With the trade and administration gaining ground they required a large number of personnel to help them in their work. So we know in the 16th century when the Britishers came to India they entered as a traders. They entered as a traders but by the 18th century they became as a rulers. By the 18th century they became as a rulers. So with the expansion of trade what happened when they entered as a traders they expanded their trade and they got hold of Indian administration by befriending means making friendship with the numerous princes and subsequently overpowering them. So extreme power on them. So the firstly they have interactions with the princess and slowly they overpowered the princess and they occupied our land. When they uh, come to the administration they required a large number of personnel. Personnel in the sense the staff. Personnel means working staff to help them in their work. So the best of the British minds thought it was worth harnessing the Indian human resources for administration. Yes, the British mind what they thought. So it's instead of uh, importing the Britishers from England to India, it will be expensive. So it's better to train the Indian people. So to grab the Indian human resources in the administration. So how by educating them properly in English. So our Indian tradition is what uh, by the time till our uh, religious uh, languages we were following. But these people to uh, interact with them. So we had a one language. What is that English? English only interaction. This is only the communication language between Britishers and Indians. So they thought uh, we should better to educate the Indians so they can become personal means a staff to them. And uh, they could think and behave like the English. So if they, if they train the Indians, what happens? They think and behave like the English means like England people. And this was the beginning of formal education system with the English as a medium of instruction. So because of this thought what they did they started encouraging the English as a medium of instruction. First major landmark in the Indian education scene is the formal plea made by Macaulay through his minutes in 1835 during the rule of William Bentick. So in 1835 the governor general of India was William Bentick. In 1835 Governor General of India was a William Bentick and he ordered Thomas Bobbington Macaulay. He ordered Thomas Bobbington Macaulay to prepare a, prepare a report on English education system. So he prepared one report and uh, in his report he mentioned that Western education, Western education system is nothing but English education system should be introduced in India. So as now we discussed to prepare to prepare the Indians uh, intermediaries between the England and Indians, Indian masses. So Indians are, so they wanted to make Indians as a personal, personal in the sense as staff between whom the England rulers and the masses of the India and uh, not only the England people, even Indian people, one of the social reformer Raja Ramon Rai, he also wrote a letter to England King. Uh, for uh, requesting to introduce an English education system in India. So, for what purpose with the scientific temper and broader vision of learning? So, so Raja Ramohara's intention was we should develop scientifically and mathematically. We should develop scientifically and mathematically. So, apart from this, uh, Indian people were studying only religious texts. Indian people were studying religious traditional textbooks. So with that books we cannot move forward. We cannot change our Indian nation. So if you want to develop our nation we should look into the science and mass. So it is possible with the English language only because 
all the resources are available in english language so for the purpose of this one so raja ramon rai wrote a letter to william bentick to introduce english education system so anyhow from 1835 he made a report to implement the english education system in india and coming to the 1835 was that uh, what's the dispatch report again uh, charles would he prepared one report so that reports a report is called as a woods dispatch and and also called as a magna carta because charles would recommended the establishment of schools grants in aid and special schools for girls and also encouraging the teaching of vernacular with english so why do we call magna carta means so here charles would he recommended to establish the schools not only the government schools even private schools as well as uh, provide the grants in aid and nothing but scholarship to the schools and special schools for home to the girls and encouraging the teaching of vernacular means in a primary level we should teach them in a mother tongue our regional language when you come to the higher secondary level or uh, university level then english language should be introduced so that is the way he prepared his report an entire education system was brought under one umbrella for a huge country like india at the time if you observe our india was a not present india pakistan bangladesh and parts of burma and nepal these all including called as a india and uh, gradually these all things these all parts were divided but uh, at the time these all were part of india and uh, this ca came under one umbrella and these all the nations uh, education system came up, came into one umbrella and the recommendations of what's a dispatch coincided with the establishment of universities in india universities established and the university's responsibility is what to look after the school education to look after the school education as well and expected high standards of teaching and learning whether high standard of teaching is going on or not if they want to modify they can modify they can give the guidelines to the schools and colleges so that is the responsibility of the university with the introduction of education system decisions had to be taken with the respect to quality of teacher even teacher quality also should be improved if english education system is uh, introducing in india then even language of the teachers also improved and teaching methods also should be improved for that purpose uh, what they thought so teacher should be given training teacher should be given training then only the teachers the quality of the teachers will will be improved and the methods of teaching also should be introduced to the teachers are taught to the teachers then the teachers will follow those methods and methods what method they follow the methods of teaching determined by the aims of which it is taught so they determine the aims so what should be the taught if the aim of learning is to know the information if we have a aim to learn the english uh, to know the information then which method we should follow grammar tra translation method if the aim of learning english is for communication purpose then direct method we should follow if the aim of learning english to acquire knowledge from the reading then dr western new method is nothing but reading method should follow so these are the examples grammar translation direct and dr western reading method so these all methods have the different purpose and we need to employ different methods and approaches to achieve this aim we need to employ for what purpose to achieve the aim the introduction of english language in india bertrand russell emphasizes the importance of the connection between aims of teaching and methods of teaching by saying the question what should be taught and how should be how should be taught are intimately connected with each other so but bertrand russell what he said he emphasized on the importance of education so we should have the two question what is that the question what should be taught to the children means the students of the indians what should be taught and how it should be taught the method we should follow the method which we should follow so these things we should keep in mind before introducing the education in india so firstly they started with the grammar translation method coming to the grammar translation method this is the oldest method teacher translate every word phrase and sentence of english into mother tongue for the easy comprehension by the students yes in this method teacher translates every word and phrase and sentence of english 
into mother tongue. So they can easily comprehend, they can understand. Who will understand your students? The students were able to assimilate English phraseology through the medium of the mother tongue. Yes, they can assimilate, means they can combine or, or they can understand. How? Through the medium of the mother tongue. So teacher will teach the English sentences into the in mother tongue language. It was easy for both teachers and students. Teaching, translating from English to Telugu or English to some other mother tongue language. So it will be easy for them, for teachers as well as students. And when English was introduced in the 18th century, as Indians were not in know about English, English could not be given to them directly. So they thought, it's better to teach a gra follow the grammar translation method. Because if we teach them directly English language, so they will not understand. What they should do? They should teach English language in their mother tongue only. Or it had to be taught through the their vernacular language, means local language or regional language or mother tongue. English should be taught what? In their vernacular language. The grammar translation method emphasizes the learning of grammar which is taught deductively, that is, by presentation and study of grammar rules. Yes, this method, what it does? So, they, it should be taught deductively. Deductively means rules first. Rules first. Then examples. First, rules should be taught to the students and then examples. So, this method is called as a deductive method. And uh, it, in a rules, so what, what they study? Your grammar rules they'll study. The structure of the foreign language are compared and contrasted with those of the mother tongue. So, structures of the foreign language. So, for foreign language here we'll take as example English only. So, this English language structure will be compared. Suppose example you take the structure of the sentence in English, subject, verb, object will be there. But if you come to the Telugu, subject, object and verb will be there. So, this will be compared from our English language to mother tongue, Telugu. Right? And contrasted. To compare and contrast what is the difference between these two languages. And then they try to understand the language. And coming to the principles of gram grammar translation method. So, what principles should be followed? Here we have a three principles. How many principles? Three. Translation interprets foreign words, phrases, and sentences in the best possible manner. So, these foreign words are phrases and sentences. What they do? They translate into their mother tongue, first method, first rule. And the second one is what, in this process of interpretation, foreign words, phrases and sentences are best assimilated. The structures of the foreign language are best learned when compared and contrasted with those of the mother tongue. So, third principle is, uh, it will be best learned when compared and contrasted. Just now we discuss. And coming to the advantages. It is an easy method because the child proceeds from known to unknown. It's a simple logic that children should be taught from known to unknown. Then it becomes easy to get into the topic. The vocabulary and the language using ability in the mother tongue helps the learner to learn English easily. And vocabulary and language using ability. So it will be taught in which language? Mother tongue. So then children will understand very easily. So, it helps in building vocabulary. So, what happens here? So, whatever the word is there, directly they translate into their mother tongue. So, with the help of this translation, their vocabulary also will be increased. So, translation from English into the mother tongue enables the learners to develop their vocabulary very rapidly. Yes, directly teacher gives their meaning in their mother tongue. Then their vocabulary will be increased very rapidly. As this method avoids difficult definitions or lengthy explanations, the learners are able to grab the exact meaning of words. Yes. They don't try to explain the difficult definitions or lengthy explanations. Direct, uh, they give the meaning, exact meaning of the word. So then, student can develop their vocabulary. Teacher is comfortable in this method because there is no risk. The teacher doesn't need to labor hard. He doesn't need to work hard to prepare examples as, uh, or is that, uh, uh, rules or any other lesson plans like we have here, preparation of lesson plan in the process of implementing the teaching items in the class. He doesn't need to think of the ways and means to explain new words even without using audiovisual aids. So, new words also he can directly, he can explain from English to their mother tongue language. Comprehension is easily tested. Your comprehension also very 
easily tested because the total paragraph are less and will be taught in their mother tongue. So the student will understand very easily. Testing the student's comprehending ability in English is easy as they are permitted to tell the answer in their mother tongue. Yes, this is the main important here. They are permitted to tell the answers in which language? Their mother tongue only. So because comprehension is very easily tested. Proper grammar is taught easily. English grammar is taught very easily by comparing it with the grammar of the mother tongue. Yes, just now I said even English subject, verb, object is there. Directly we can say that our students in Telugu mother tongue we have a structure of subject, object and verb. So based on that, this sentence can be changed into this structure. So then students can understand the grammar in easy manner. Coming to the disadvantages. It is an unnatural method. It is a not natural method, unnatural method. The logical sequence of learning language is listening, speaking, reading and writing. Yes. Now we are following what is that SL, LSRW method. LSRW method we are following. Listening, speaking, reading and writing. But in grammar translation method what happened? The learning process started from reading and writing which is unnatural. It is totally unnatural and because of this reason that our graduates are not able to acquire language skills means they are unable to grasp the language skills because we are not following the LSRW method. Here second one is what speech is neglected. Language is speech. Language is speech but they don't speak. There are languages that exist even without written form but no language exists without spoken form. Yes, every language will have the spoken form. But few languages will not have the script. The learners are not privileged to acquire speaking ability in English. Because of grammar translation method, what happens here? Students are following only two methods. Which methods? Reading and writing method. Because of them, they are not acquiring the speaking ability. No room for pattern practice. The grammar translation method doesn't give any room for pattern practice. Hence, the students are not able to speak English correctly. So here, simple logic. No room for pattern practice means examples. Structures are examples. They are unable to practice. N number of examples they don't practice because whatever the sentence is given, that sentence will be translated into mother tongue. And uh, that when that uh, sentence is translated into mother tongue, that only student will practice. Means he will not get more exercises or patterns. So students may not get uh, what is that speaking skills. So here, we will we'll try to understand what is happening if you are following the LSRW. LSRW is nothing but uh, listening. L means listening. So when you are, uh, when student is listening at the beginning, every language, even your mother tongue also starts with a listening only. When the child starts listening, he will try to understand the, what is that? Uh, uh, pronunciation of the word. Pronunciation of the word. And intonation, her tone, intonation, or rhythm. So these all will be understood by the child. Then based on that, a, student, a child will start speaking. When you say Amma, then he start listening. He will try to understand the pronunciation and intonation and rhythm of the word. Then he will try to respond with the same word. And what is happening here? His students are, or child speaking skills are developing. Then he will focus on reading. When he get into the school or something, he will start reading. Whatever the oral programs, oral activities will, will be done in a pre-primary level. So that will be focused on first listening and speaking and then reading. Then he will start writing. So this is the method we have, will follow. But directly when you focus on reading, then what happens here? Teacher will not focus on listening skills of the students. If it's teaching also in a prescribed manner, he will teach. The students will try to translate in a written form only. There will be less chance of listening and speaking. Then students will not acquire the speaking ability. And here no possibility of hab habit formation. As there is no speech, now we discuss. No speech means no, no talking. Or no speaking skills and no pattern practices, no examples practice. So then a habit formation is not possible. The student is speaking continuously, 
then it will be habituated to the students uh, right uh, to speaking in english but uh, when he is not habituated then he will not speak and he will feel shy or he will be discouraged to speak in front of all the people after all language is a habit yes the student never practice to think in english this is also fact when student is unable to speak in english he will be not able to think in english also rather they think in their mother tongue then translate into english then they try to translate as as it is in english so exact translation is not possible yes and this is also fact when student is not speaking or not listening then exact translation also not possible because each language has its own uniqueness no two languages have their history traditions culture and the lifestyle is same just now i said subject verb and object of structure of english but when you come to the telugu subject object and verb so no means here the, the two languages are structures are different is nothing but lifestyle is different not the same so exact matching of words in these two languages is not possible so this is a fact we don't find the exact matching words in two languages in many cases the idiomatic expressions in english are not possible at all even if it is done the result will be ridiculous even idiomatic expressions also is not possible if we, if you are doing also what happens here it will become ridiculous rule govern learning language is used situation it is not possible to learn any language by learning its rules in the words of dr balard to speak any language whether native or foreign entirely by rule is quite impossible yes it's the main important thing here important thing is what here rule govern learning means language is not possible to learn based on the rules if you are following the rules you can't speak you should not while speaking you should not think about the rules then only you will get the fluency in the language mistakes will be corrected rectified later on and uh, sometimes you will rectify yourself by listening to others but uh, based on rules if you try to speak uh, you won't get the fluency here and dr balad also saying same thing to speak any language whether native or foreign entirely by rule is not is quite impossible and students are not active in this method only teacher is active because teacher only teaching from mother tongue grammar translation method to mother tongue then teacher only will be active while teaching the students are passive because students don't know the structure and students don't know the exact meaning of the words so they will be the passive learners so they don't develop any language skills here it is uninteresting when the student is not involving in this process when the student is passive definitely this method is uninteresting translation method is dull and mechanical and also bookish instructional aids are not used to make lessons interesting it reduces the learning of a living language to that of a dead language so this is a fact we will be not able to focus on the language the child is involving in this learning then only ch child will get the interest otherwise he will become dull and mechanical and also bookish so this is about grammar translation method thank you all thank you for watching